Good evening, everyone. How y'all doing? Right, let's do another one of these. I was very nearly not doing this. I have one of these kind of... You know that thing where you just get irrationally some emotion for kind of no fucking reason? I, I got rage just <laughs> like half an hour ago, just suddenly pissed off with everything. Things were a bit noisy for a bit, and I think I just clicked somewhere in my head. But I think I've got everything under control, and I just couldn't work out what I was going to do. But there's been a little... Uh, a little thing I was working on this week, which I did a write-up of, um, but I thought it'd be fun to have a look at because we did the original on stream. So we made this cutaway shader, right? And so we've got this sphere here. We're actually rendering a full sphere. And then we are, let's go onto the, yeah, there we go. We're beginning with all the, everything breaking forever. Um, let's have a look. Right, where is the cutaway height? Pretty sure that's a thing. Cut a Cutaway height, there it is. Okay, so then we can change this. And if we set it up really high to begin with, uh, we get the full sphere. And if we can set it low, and then we chop down here, and things like that. So we played around with that a lot, and we made this little effect. And it was really simple. The way we did it was we rendered the back faces. And we... How's the best way to do this? Does my doodle device work? Um, we did not plan properly to be doing this. So let's just have a quick look. So if I go down here, eShell and Gromit MPX, and then hopefully we will have, is it F9? Yeah. Okay, so we have our cutaway sphere, and we have this height that we know that we're cutting away at across here, and we're looking down from this direction. So we extended this line, like wherever, whichever fragment we're at, we projected it back along the view ray until um, the Y coordinate was equal to the cutaway height. And this is the world position that we wanted it to be. So we calculated this value and then we textured the top of it based on that. And when you do it everywhere, it gives you this wonderful effect like you're looking at the top of an object. And it was pretty neat. And, uh, oh, I haven't done greets yet either. One second, that will not do. So, good evening to Jason Pond, the Pimp, and Barrett. Barrett! Hey, good to see you, man. And uh, it's been a long time. And Trash Talk, and Chimera, and Zero Repent. Good to have you here. And to anyone that isn't shown in the list, hello. Um, right. So, yes, this was cool. And it's kind of neat. And you can do this kind of cool stuff. like Because this this sphere doesn't have a top when we go into it. You get this really weird effect, which is kind of cool. Um, but when we started to put this... So the reason I did this is we're making a game called Tailspire. And you it's a, a, it's a place you can play games like D&D. &D. You build whole worlds out of tiles and things like this. But you build these big buildings and you need to be able to see inside them. If you point your camera somewhere, you want to see inside the buildings. We need to hide some of the tiles and other tiles we want to actually chop away. Um, we don't want to be trying to modify all the meshes on the fly. So this is a nice, quick effect. Um, so, let's see. Um, hey, Darius. And so, yes, what was the next bit? So this was cool. But then, when we were implementing it, we found a nice little case that we should have tested, but we didn't. And that is what happens when you introduce a second one that intersects. And the answer is, things look bad. All right, so these fragments here are closer than the back faces, naturally. So they are covering those up. And so we're in this situation where, like, we just get this. The whole effect breaks down, and it's a real shame. So we need to come up with a new technique. Um, and there's a few things we can do. So one of them would be to um, modify the depth position of the fragment. And that should work. I want to play. I want to experiment some more with that later. We were trying to avoid that for reasons um, on the Unity side, so I wanted to experiment not doing that. So I was thinking about what if we could get a mask of this area. And so we really need to know everywhere that we we sh we're seeing a back or our ray crosses, basically when we have an exposed back face. And so I tinkered around with this for a while and then came up with some diagrams. So this is the general idea. This is the situation. Like our rays coming in. And then after fucking around for a while, I thought about this situation, which is basically, okay, let's draw a bunch of lines down. 
and then we'll just count back faces and front faces, right? We wanna get those, maybe you wanna get the actual positions and do distances or something like that. But if you just look and say, okay, we're gonna add one whenever we're a back face and subtract one whenever we're a front face, then this case is one, which is good. This one becomes one, two, one. Okay, so that's good. This one here, where it's covered up by a front face, you're always gonna have a matching front face, which should equal zero, or if somehow you get more front faces than back faces, a negative number. So basically, if it's positive, then it should be an exposed area, and we want a place where we want to put the lid. Um, so we need a shader that's gonna basically allow us to do this counting. Of course, addition of subtraction, uh, we can reorder those um, operations without changing the result, which is neat. And that falls in nicely with um, what we want to do in shaders. So we want a counting shader. So what we're going to do is basically we don't want fragments to just be discarded. So we are going to render the front face, but render everything basically. Turn off all um, culling, render both sides at the same time, and set the color to be one um, for a back face, minus one for a front face. We'll render everything into a floating point frame buffer. And then we should get a result that we can use as a mask. So that is what we are going to play with. Um, we'll try and re-implement this. And then we, I'm not sure, we'll either tinker with it some more or we're going to have a look at some Keppel bugs because we ran into one last week and I know what the reason is and it might be one we fix on stream. Um, we'll see. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is we want, oh yeah, that's, that's the other restriction that I was kind of interested in doing was, shall we do it for this one? I was interested in having an object that represented the cutaway. Yeah, let's do that as well. Why not? Does that make it... Makes it a little more complicated, but not by much. Um, okay, let's look at that first. We're just going to hack and slash on this thing and see how it goes. Rip and tear. Oh yeah, Doom got delayed, didn't it? I was actually really pleased to see how chill everyone's been about it. And it's just like, yeah, it's coming out 2020. Cool, let's do it. Um... I'm just glad to hear it's still on the way. Okay, so we need a box type thing. And that's what our cutaway is going to be to begin with. So let's just copy this code and shove it down here. And rename, let's just call this cutaway. And we'll pass in the size and it's just going to be a float instead. Let's just say it's... 40 and check the size is a single float yes and we are going to use the size for the x and z and for the y we're just going to make it very thin um, and we'll worry more about that another time it's just something we can hack up quickly and this type okay What's up with that? Oh yeah, I'm in the wrong language, so it's F0, not just F. Cool. Right, so that's our cutaway object. Um, also, we don't want to push it onto the things list. We're going to handle this separately, um, and we are going to return the object itself. So let's just do obj, and um, yeah, I think that's a start. Right, so let's go back to here. We're going to make a variable to store a cutaway. Def var cutaway. And then in reset, we're just going to go and make this with some other stuff as well. So set f cutaway to be um, actually, why is that not just make cutaway? Let's call it make cutaway. And I haven't enabled current hints so that's good right and let's just place this at um, well we'll place it at the same height as we've been having that cutaway let's have a look at that it was at 12 so we'll do it at 0 12 0 um, and leave that size there and it's called cutaway It is amazing how much worse you get at stuff when you're frustrated. 
it's just <laughs> it's really rough right so let's um get here and just test this by doing draw cutaway um oh yeah draw and we have to pass in the camera don't we current camera does that work okay cool so we get a nice thin object we can use for our cutaway and the reason for this shape thing is we might actually want like a cut a sphere out of a scene or more likely we want to let the artists control what the cutaway shape is going to be and the fall off and all that kind of stuff and um yeah so we'll, we'll use a shape i think what we'll do it actually in game is um either make a plane that's well yeah a, a mesh that's just one-sided and curved so it's like what do you call it it's it's not a plane because it's not flat but it's like it's like being inside a sphere and looking at the outside you've got that one skin and that's it anyway whatever that is we'll probably do something like that okay so now that's done what we want to do is um render this and then throw away the any anything that's um closer and we want to then do the summing and stuff like that um so we're gonna have to render this stuff into the depth buffer hey barrett yeah i'm on today i've been really bad at announcing these things uh recently i yeah stuff has been on my mind i think i might take tomorrow off from work because i'm working over the weekend uh so i think i might just have tomorrow off if i do there's some lisp stuff i do want to play with to do with ui because that's been ah it's been sitting in the back of my head for weeks now yeah it has been too long man it's good to see you okay so we are going to create let's let's um if we're going to render um this cutaway object into the scene but only use it for cutting stuff away we don't need the visual aspect of it we just need to uh write into the depth buffer so let's do that let's make an fbo um that's just just depth fbo um and then depth bar i think we're gonna have a depth sampler as well okay let's do that and let's go to reset fbo's and let's set this up. Oh, I jumped too far. It's impressive. Okay, here we are. Um, and is there, it might be worth just using the same depth buffer that's being used um, for the scene itself. Can't right now think of a reason that wouldn't be a good idea. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go make FBO. Um, we're going to have an attachment. Just use the, using the pattern. It's going to be D for depth. And we are going to take it from um, the scene FBO. So we can say attachment of scene FBO D. Um, and then we do this. And that gets an FBO with a depth attachment and nothing else. Um, then we are going to make the depth sampler so depth sampler um, and it's going to be sample uh, and we sample textures so it's attachment text is the shorthand um, scene fbo and d again let's just run that over here what did i do oh i said sampler rather than sample Okay, so now we've got the depth sampler um, and we've got the just depth FBO. So let's render the, um, let's render the depth stuff. So with FBO bound uh, and then the just depth FBO. And I'm gonna do something I remembered from last time so it doesn't catch us up, uh, catch us out rather, is that, um, it wants to know the viewport size for this and by default it takes it from um, the first color attachment of the FBO but we don't have that so we need to tell it what it is so what we're going to do is we're going to say um, viewport for size I think that's what it was called god damn it oh attachment for size that makes sense that's, yeah attachment for size is D that's the one we're interested in cool 
and then we are going to um, draw this thing. So we're going to need to get ourselves a little draw function. So let's go to things again and go down here. Currently we were using the draw method that's used for all things, which is this one. But we're going to have a slightly different setup. And so we are going to open the render file and go and change things. Um, so we want to, the vertices to be transformed in the same way as they are for regular rendering, which is using the thing vertex stage. But we want a, actually we want no fragment stage. Um, so let's do this. Oops. Can I do... How does that work? Yeah, there we go. Um, so luckily, not too many weeks back, we added support for having uh, for writing just to the depth buffer. And we do this by um, setting fragment to nil, and then we can set our vertex stage. And this will be um, just right depth pipeline. Let's take that. We can come up here. And the thing we're drawing is going to be the cutaway. Um, the buffer stream. Yep, we can just take from the thing. That's fine. And everything else. There's actually a lot of things here we won't need. Um, for example, let's go have a look at this. The only uniforms are the model to world, world to view, view to clip. Um, and scale, so we don't need this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or that. Okay. So that actually should be the method uh, we use. And then we can say draw. We're going to draw the cutaway. Um, oh, yep, and the first argument is actually the camera, current camera. Okay, so now we should be writing... Um, into the depth buffer. Yeah, we should be writing into the depth buffer only, which is cool. Now that we've done that, let's try and think it's like if it's worth just kind of splatting that out somewhere that we can look at it. But I think I think we can trust that it's going to work. Uh, we'll see if it doesn't actually. Um, is we want to draw front faces and back faces of all this stuff without all the texturing and all that crap, and only using. Um, yeah, and only yeah, only doing that addition thing we were talking about. So, okay, right. So we need another FBO because we need to write that result somewhere. So we'll make one of those. Um, it's going to have one floating point texture attachment. Um, and what else do we want to know about it? I'm going to check up on the chat soon. Um, but the other thing we need... Oh, we're going to want to use this same depth buffer. That's really... I'm not sure if we need to share this depth buffer with the scene. It's not going to hurt. Um, but at the same time, yeah, we'll see. Maybe it will hurt, actually. Not sure. Hmm. We'll get to that. Not a problem. Anyway. Let's see what's going on in chat first. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Parrot's been writing programs to find out where to live. Hey, you've been off, off list for a while in Python. Oh, cool. Um, ah, no knocking the PHP. We'll have those visitors in soon, too. Um, excellent. Okay, so drink water and then FBOs. All right. Good noise is right in your ears there, folks. That is very close to the mic. I will. I might move that. Um, okay, so we need... Ah, fuck it. Let's just do this. Some FBO and the some sampler. Probably going to need both of these, so let's do it. Um... I should be freeing these two, but I'm not. Right, some FBO um, is going to have 
uh, the same depth attachment, but we want a different... Now, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Um, can we just leave the dimensions? Will that be filled in? I know I want ele an element type of float. And then that should be that. Um, let's bring up the REPL and play around with this stuff and see what we get. I'm not sure why that jumped down the screen. Um, okay, so. In the sampler, we're not going to care about the depth. We're only going to care about the da, 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 some FBO. We're going to take the attachment that was used in zero. Yes, that's what we want. It's not depth sampler. It's some sampler. Okay, let's do this. Right. So we try and make this. Apparently that works. That's great. Cool. Um, so let's look at the. Oh, we could do. We'll do that right after this. Some sampler. Great. Let's look at the, um, well, seeing as we have this to hand, let's look at the sampler texture of this. It's a texture 2D, and if we inspect it, we can see that its element, or image format is R32F, which is a floating point number, and only one of them, which is great, so that's good. So we have that set up now, which is nice. So let's go and take that and get down here again. So we've written out our depth. And then we're going to do something interesting. So we're going to do the with FBO bound stuff again. And we're going to bound the sum FBO. Um, we don't need to do the attachment for size now because this does have a color attachment. And then we want to draw all of these things, doing the cutaway, summing up that stuff. But we also want to discard any... Oh yeah, no, doing the cutaway. The way we can do the cutaway now is we can discard any fragment that's closer than what we've written into this depth buffer. Right, so the way we do that is we can say, we'll do with ZF. And the thing we're going to do is we're going to set cull face. Uh, we're going to set to nil. And then we're going to do the depth test function. Um, we're going to set to greater than, or we can just set it like this. Um, and what else? Curl face, depth test. Feels like there should be something else in there as well, but I can't remember what it is. Nope, it's not coming to mind right now. Let's have a look. Not curl face. Not depth clamp format range mask. Depth mask. Yes, depth mask. And the reason is, when we're doing this, we don't actually want to write into uh, the depth buffer. We want to we want to read from it. We want to test against it. But we don't want to write into it. Uh, because we're just using that right now to store the cutaway, and that's what we need. So, that'll be cool. Um, we may be able to get away with writing this in, actually. We'll experiment with this later. Okay, so now we need to... Um, and we're going we're, we're gonna to draw things slightly differently. So, let's uh, loop through all this stuff again. Loop through all the things that we need to draw... The only th ones we want to cut away are these, so I'm actually going to do the same. This uh, this check down here. We're going to say when um, we won't do this curl face stuff because we've already set that up here. We're saying when um, the type is tile. Yes, we're going to draw. We're not going to draw a fake top. We are going to draw. Um, we're going to just do some faces. That's, that's what it's going to be called. Some faces. And that's going to be a function we're going to write. So let's go to render and go down here. Some faces is going to be the function. Um, let's borrow some, some code from here. Yes. 
Yes. Let's do this. checks so selection this is the only one it's going to be all right and we're going to need a pipeline um, for this again it's going to have the normal um, vertex stage but we're going to have a different fragment stage so let's write a um, let's write something for this this will be the some faces pipeline and we're going to have something here we'll get to that in a minute so defun g sum faces f for fragment in this case um what do the other fragment stages look like well they receive all this stuff don't they so let's uh let's copy this because we're receiving we're using the same vertex stage so we're going to get the same data passed to us i'm going to get rid of all these uniforms for now because i don't think we need them yet um and then, then what are we going to do? We are going to need to check which face we are, right? So I think there is something. In fact, I, I looked this up. GL front facing. Cool. That's what we're looking for. Front facing. And it's going to return true um, if the fragment belongs to a front facing primitive. And when it's front facing, we want it to do minus one. And when it was a back face, we wanted to do one. And that's going to be the lot. So this should be our fragment stage, which does all the summing that we want. And vec3, vec3, vec2, oops, vec2, map3 is the signature we we're going for. And there's this. Right, let's see if we've managed to make something that is working. Let's have a look. So some faces is here. Compile that. Okay, apparently it's already running. It should be writing into some FBO. So we should be able to come down here and change this out for some sampler. And that looks completely wrong. Oh, I know why. Right, so we haven't actually set up the blending stuff. We need to do additive blending for us to be able to add together these ones and minus ones and get some kind of result. So let's have a look for that now. Um, in play with verts, we're going to scroll up. We're going to make ourselves a little variable just here. Def var. Additive blend. And then we go make blending params. And the way we do this is... Okay, yes. Mode RGB. And mode alpha are both funk add and then let's look at the documentation for this um, the valid values for the other stuff are all of these and I think what we want to do is say one which means we're going to be multiplying the source by one and the destination by one before we add them together which is what we want um, so let's just take these do and we'll say one. Hopefully, this will give us some additive blending params. And then when we go down to do sum, we can say now this is what I can't remember. Can we just set with blending here? Does this take blending params? Doesn't look like it's working, does it? Um, I wasn't sure if that was just, let's have a look. With blending, hmm, that is not the, oh, wait a second, we're not clearing this thing each time. Okay, right, so we've got some issues here. First off, we need to clear that. Then we come down here and clear this, and then 
and now everything is gone. <laughs> So what are we doing here? Ah, right, wait a second. If we're clearing, we're also clearing the depth attachment and we don't want to do that. So we want to, um, if we just clear FBO, some FBO here, we also need to clear the scene FBO, which is using the same depth attachment as well. Let's move the, all the clears up here. So if we clear the scene FBO, that's going to clear the depth. So we don't need to worry about that. We clear the FBO here. We want to clear just this attachment. And now that looks a little different. That is looking pretty good. Okay. So it's looking like a pretty perfect mask right there. Um, one of the things that's happening is that like we're doing draw text on a, um, on a floating point buffer, right? So anything that's greater than one is being clamped to one. So it's hard to see where the additions and things are happening. So what I'd like to do is go to render and let's change this to 0.1. Is that showing up? You can see a bit of it there. Let's, let's up it a bit. Okay, so you can see in the middle where our overlap's happening here. This is where we're getting, this is, this is, so this is one, two, one, and then we can just you know, clamp that at one and we get the mask that we're looking for. So that's the main bit of the trick. Um, oh, I'm seeing some interesting chat in in chat. Um, and we're, we're going to go from here. So we'll take this and keep going. Right, let's set this back to one quickly. And then I'm going to drop into chat again and see what's going on. Wow. Barrett, it's been a while. You got some catching up to do. Right. Um, some Ruby conversation. Sondriel saying. Um, <laughs> just making jokes about HTTP. Uh, oh, sorry, HTML, sorry. What am I on about? People battling with different languages. Sondriel saying, "Oh, that's interesting. So, which instructions are you messing with that have got interesting characteristics on?" Um, on Steamroller. What's the project, by the way? That sounds neat. That you're having to care about that stuff. It's uh, that's really cool. <laughs> In front of him saying Barrett is one year of chat to throw in here. Yeah, it's really cool. It's uh. Good to have it. It's been a while. Right. Okay. So we're we're summing faces. We've got this. Let's go down and get rid of draw this draw text call for a second. And so what are we doing here? What have we got? So we this is all dark now. I guess this is because we are well. If this is in our depth buffer, then everything up further than weight than that is getting thrown away and there's nothing being drawn here. So yeah, that would make some degree of sense. Um, maybe we don't need the depth buffer thing in in the scene FBO. I think we might be able to get away without that, to be honest. Um, and have the sum FBO and everything be the ones that are sharing. Hmm. And then we're going to draw the so we're going to then we're going to draw the tiles, 
cutting away based on the contents of the depth buffer. Yeah, okay, so we're going to separate those out. Wait a second. Let's let's go tweak this again. Let's bring the rattle here. Let's put this over here. And then we're going to go up to reset FBOs. All right, so... Um, Just depth is now going to be put after here. Um, this is just going to have its own um, depth buffer and a float buffer. It's float attachment, sorry, and a depth attachment. And then it samples from that, and that's fine. And then this one is going to be looking at some FBO for its depth. Um, and that looks kind of cool. So let's do reset FBOs. And we're back here again. Cool. So, next step. What is the next step? Oh, we should double check that that um, that we're still drawing correctly into our lovely texture, and <laughs> we're not. Why are we not? Because our clearing stuff has changed now. Um, we want to clear all of that. Yes. Cool. So that will clear all the attachments, um, and this will clear all those attachments, and that is good. All right, so now when we when we draw the tiles here, we don't want to throw things away based on cutaway height anymore. Um, we should find out where this is used. Um, let's uh, let's just how do we make things unbound? Um, Nope. Um, I know I can do it from the inspector, so I'll do it in there. Oh, you idiot. That's not how you do it. Right. Inspect the symbol. Uh, and we're going to uninturn it. That's only the... There we go. Unbind. There we go. Boop. And now we're going to get errors because somebody was trying to use it. Um, let's uninturn it as well. Why not? Aha, gone. You are going over here, and then I am going to jump to this point here. Because the tile pipeline wants cutaway height, and it's not allowed it anymore. In fact, we don't need malt either. We're not using that for anything. There's a whole bunch of things we're just not doing here anymore. So let's do that, and we'll go to tile pipeline. Um, which will be in render. Couldn't jump to the definition, so we'll just do this. And let's go have a look. Okay, so we, have, we are taking out cutaway height and the multiplier. Um, which means we can't do the cutaway, the discard based on the cutaway height now. So we're going to have to get rid of that. Let's um, let's just get rid of all this then. We don't need that malt shit anymore. Do, do, do. Let's see if we can continue. No! Oh yeah, it's still unbound. Three. Okay, where is it? Draw fake top. Oh yeah. We're not using this anymore, are we? We shouldn't be using this anymore because we're going to be we're actually going to draw the um, cutaway plane and texture it um, we're going to discard things using our mask and then we're just going to texture it so that will be fine so let's let's get rid of this altogether um, yeah let's grab there we're going to get rid of this um, oh yeah does it use anything interesting is the fake top pipeline. Okay, so fake top sampler and cutaway height. And oh, it's in render, isn't it? Fake, fake, fake. Um, fake top frag stage. Let's get rid of that. Fake top pipeline. All that kind of stuff. Draw fake top. Get rid of these. Continue, maybe? Bam. Okay, so now these are complete again, which is annoying, but it'll do. Um, we will check our draw text again to make sure that we're still getting our mask correctly, which we are, which is good. So we haven't broken anything yet except that last rendering part. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the depth buffer. We're going to pass it to um, here when we're drawing these things. 
and we're going to throw things away based on um, what am I say? Based on the contents of that depth buffer. Let's just have a look. Okay, so where's our uh, depth sampler? I'm actually going to move these to the render file for reasons. Not good reasons, but reasons. Um, and when we're in draw, we actually want to pass in. So the tile pipe. Oh, it's, is it just for the tile pipeline? Maybe we only need it for that then. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just do depth sampler. Depth sam is going to be this. And we'll do this, and it's complaining. Hey, there's no argument. Depth sam. There will be in a second. We're going to go render, and we're looking for a tile pipeline. We're going to go to the fragment stage, and we're going to pass in. Oh yeah, I mean. And we say continue, and everything's running again, which is good. So we have the depth buffer, hopefully here now, um, in a way that we can read. Um, it would also be good if we could get the, if we had the size of this viewport, um, and then we're going to use that to text to um, to look up uh, in this. Oh my God! Why can't I speak? Anyway, um, we're going to do this. Viewport res is going to be a vector two. Um, and we're going to do this. We're going to say viewport res is the viewport resolution of the current viewport. Okay, so now that's being passed in as well. And let's see if we can put this together. So we are going to. Um, so we're going to have. We're going to call it cut depth. Is going to be the x coordinate of sampling the texture depth sand based on um, DUV, uh, which is going to be our UVs for our depth thing, and that's going to be. Um, let's have a look. So we want to get. We should just be dividing whatever our position is by the viewport resolution, I think. Yeah, that should be right. So let's have a look. Let's do um, GL FragPos, I think, is in. Uh... Actually, is. Oh, it's FragCord, isn't it? Okay. So if we take that and we swizzle it to get the X and Y. And then we use that to get the depth, and then we say, hey, if um, what is it going to be? If the Z coordinate of GL frag chord is less than depth, then discard something like that. Well, I can't type, but other than that, <laughs> well, that didn't work. Um, all right, let's have a try again. Okay, so some coffee, some chat, and then we'll go and see what I've cocked up there. Oh, there's some filthy C++ jokes going on. Um, Right, it's just chaos in there. I'm just gonna let it scroll by and enjoy it while it's happening. I won't try and read it to you all. Right, so if um, okay, so I I kept my depth values right. It's it's zero when it's close. It's one when it's far away. Um, the Z of the GL frag chord. Let's have a look at the documentation for that. Contains the window relative coordinates of the current fragment. Um, yeah. The Z component is the depth value that will be used for the fragment's depth if no shader contained any rights to 
GL frag depth. Right, cool. So we could have just used GL frag depth, but that's fine. So I suppose the question is, is this even vaguely correct? Are we are we passing that in? I suppose that's one question, isn't it? Are we passing that in? Um, right. Tile. So we have this depth sampler. It'd be kind of neat if we could just see what's in that. What happens if we do a draw text on that? I don't know if that'll work or not. Or if it'll be visible. Let's just play with verts. Let's do a draw text on the depth sampler. It's hard to see what's going on. Do we have a color scale? We do. Um, I would kind of like it to be able to just take a value, but it won't. Uh, that was dumb anyway. So color scale is 10. Continue. Um, that is not a float for. That is very correct. Um, but also, you should have just accepted it and made it into a float for. I would have been happier with that. Um, Okay, it's kind of frustrating because it looks like there's nothing in there, which is a bit annoying. So we have our depth sampler. And that's, oh wait, oh wait, have a look at this. We're still taking the depth attachment from some F from scene FBO and not some FBO. Fool. Of several toques. Okay. I can already see a faint outline in there that I couldn't see before. Let's actually go down to draw text and use that. Um, it still doesn't seem like this scale thing is working very well. I must admit. Um, going to make the value smaller. That's going to be no good. No. Fuck that. Okay. Right. There we go. <laughs> it was working anyway. So yes, those values were being looked up correctly and now we're discarding things um, based on that, which is cool. So now we've just got the front faces. Everything's thrown away. We need to now draw the um, cutaway shape that we've rendered um, and texture that with something and discard all the things according to that mask we made. Let's go do that. That's going to be cool. Um, so. Let's do a... Defun. Final draw. Cut away. What's the time? 21.48. We're not even at an hour in. Excellent. And... The map G um, final draw cutaway pipeline or P line um, buff stream of thing. Let's pass in all this normal stuff that we've been using for all of them. I don't know why I just didn't copy paste that whole function because I just could have. Um, let's go and just copy this too because they're all just variations. Final draw cutaway fragments. Okay, cool. Right, so. We're going to pass in some uniforms to this one there. The uniforms are going to be. Just checking it was if it was plural or not, because I can't remember things. Um, we're going to pass in two samplers. We're going to pass in the. Um, let's just call it the albedo, um, which is going to be a sampler 2D. And we're going to have a mask, which is the sampler 2D. Um, we're going to texture um, using our Vido, using um, UVs. What are UVs going to be? Do, 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 do. What's the best way to do that? 
let's just use for now we're going to use the world position um let's use position we'll swizzle out the um x and z and that'll do it for us okay so we've got that and let's just stick that in there and make this and compile these things and then go here and then after drawing all this stuff we're going to draw into the same fbo we're going to say final draw cutaway using the current camera using the cutaway um oh okay i don't know what texture it's using there seeing as we haven't given it one. Oh, let's look at this it's garbage oh it's it's from the plants it's the plants texture oh something stayed bound or something like that questionable right okay that's cool um so we want to specify the albedo and we want to specify the mask i'm going to pass both of those in um albedo and mask we do this now it's erroring which is good and we don't know what the albedo is yet but the mask is going to be the uh, what's our, our some some sampler or something like that some sampler there we go um and now we need a texture that we can use for this is there any sampler that we've got handy um fake top sampler there we go let's uh i think we might have got rid of that variable already we did let's just show it here def var fake top sampler is nil but it's actually already bound i think let's make sure it's still bound fake top sampler there's the sampler go down here where's albedo pass in that say continue ah oh. wait a second it says mask is not of type sampler oh right we haven't actually given things oh no wait what okay let's go in here oh yeah we haven't specified it all right so albedo and mask say continue okay so there's there's our texture it's a bit high frequency at the moment so we are going to go into this and we're just going to divide this by 10. and so there's our cutaway plane and now we want to discard anything that's not in the mask so we're actually going to use the same technique as we did just a minute ago so we are going to need to pass in um, a couple of things we've got stuff everywhere haven't we we need um, the viewport resolution, which is viewport resolution of. Oh, I thought it was going to give it to me then. Current viewport. Um, let's do this, and it's going to complain. Hey, that key doesn't exist. So we'll go and add it now. We go here. It's viewport res. It's a vec2. Um, and we're going to do the same sampling as we did before. So it's going to be um, mask UVs is going to be the um, swizzle of the GL frag chord. We're going to take the X and wait a second, what are we doing from that? X and Y. Yep. And we are dividing it by the viewport resolution, and that gets our UVs. And then we're going to look up the mask bow by sampling the mask texture at those UVs we just calculated. And then let's say, well, one thing we could do quickly, let's just use that value, right? And then we'll say continue. We'll say continue, and we'll see it's there. And then we will go. Um, when less than or equal to mask value zero, oh yeah, we should just get the x coordinate here, shouldn't we? Um, then discard. And then we have a nice little top and we have no intersection problems. And the nice thing is because that's a mesh being rendered there, um, we have normals for it we can we can shape it however we like we can put normals on we can throw every effects that we normally do at it and for our advantage for us in unity is going to be that then 
like it can receive shadows and all that kind of stuff in the things that are already in ways that are already handled so that's neat um and for metian if he's watching we better uh commit this yay new cutaway effect um and yeah 55 minutes not bad okay so with that done let's just go and uh make a couple of tweaks so we can control it a bit let's go and say when what should we do when someone's holding down the um so when keyboard button input source is the default keyboard the index is key dot left alt i think should be fine yep there um when we do that then we'll get the mouse movement we'll get the y mouse movement so mouse move of mouse um, and then we will increment the y coordinate of the position of the cutaway by that and let's see what happens if we go over here now and whoa it's a bit sensitive let's uh let's divide that by three and it's going the wrong way so i need to invert that as well nice and it'd be nice to get some angle on there as well so it looks we can see that it's a step up from our last one because our last one was just a cutaway height and um the way we're going to do that is we are going to what should we do well we need to set off the rotation of the cutaway and the way we're going to do that is kind of nice if we had an angle um let's just shove a little cutaway angle up here there we are cutaway angle zero um and then so what we'll do is we'll increment the cutaway angle cutaway angle no not there using the x scaled it down yeah let's do that and then we can set this to be some quaternion so we'll get a quaternion from fixed angles and we'll say that the, the x rotation is our cutaway angle and zero and zero let's make those single floats because and let's go over here now and if we do this oh that is way too sensitive um also i kind of like it rotating in the other direction so let's move this along to the z position and let's make this 0.01 um, and then we can do this but that's also backwards which is very confusing to me let's do this make this 0.2 so it's a bit more sensitive and uh, oh yeah we got interesting bit at the bottom where the bottom cuts away so i'll have to look into that um oh i think i know what that is it's when we raise the thing no, it's not when we raise the thing high enough. I think it's when the box is no longer covering um, the full scene. But yeah, that's the idea. Okay. Right. So now that we've done that, let's see, that was basically the effect I wanted to go through. Uh, so we're going to throw that into Unity and um, get some things working. Another thing I, I was wondering about, if we could just set the... Because I know we've been avoiding setting depth positions. But if we just set the fragment position, the, the frag depth um, of the back face, it would then cover up the front face that was the problem. So maybe that's just the answer. Um, I will play with that. Cheers, Pondipin. Um... Yeah, it's, it's a. It, I just really enjoyed it. It was play. It was something to play around with the other day, and um, just the summing thing and the additive blend. I thought it was just quite cute. So, um, oops. And it really holds up. You know, you can just get 
and it is actually a plane now so it holds up really well in these kind of things so yeah neat yeah okay so that was the fun bit of the show <laughs> and now we've got to deal with some bugs so in uh keppel last week we ran into this case where we were we had made an array texture and then we were pulling it because we were testing um layered rendering and then we were pulling it and we were getting memory folds um and i want to go into what that was uh, and maybe fix it we'll see um, um yeah we'll see <laughs> So let's look at textures. Let's bring those up. Uh, file textures.lisp. And there's lots of copy methods and things here. We'll get to those. So what we had was a, um, let's make a texture. And let's make a variable for it. Def bar temp zero, make texture, no contents. The dimensions are going to be uh, let's just make it 10 by 10. Um, the element type is going to be VEC3 or something like that. And the um, interesting bit is that it's going to be an array texture. So its layer count um, is going to be 5, let's say. So now we have that texture. Um, and then this is something I need to check. So if I do get text image right so when we pull when we gl pull this it's meant to go and again ask gl hey bring all these um, pixels down it's going to allocate a c array or a gp array what we've asked for that's big enough for the image that we've requested and then it's going to pull it and there are issues and to give an idea of why we're going to use a different version of get text image because last time we were just getting memory errors um, if I go to get text image up here we can see there are some variants there's get n text image which is only available in uh, the very latest stuff but we're running in well it's in 4.5 it'll be in 4.6 as well um, so this one here and the thing about this one is you can pass in the number of bytes um, you can pass in the size of the buffer that you're trying to download into in bytes and it'll tell you if there's something wrong with it. It'll, well, it'll, it'll do this. Let's have a look. Here we go. Invalid operation is generated by this guy if the buffer size required to store the requested data is greater than buff size. So basically, you pass in... Where is it? Buff size here. And if it's not big enough, it's going to throw a GL error. Um, this one won't throw a GL error. It will just write to undefined memory and maybe it'll crash, maybe it won't. And that's why at the end of last time we were crashing the Lisp image fairly frequently. Um, and it was related to this. So let's replace this with get n text image momentarily. And then here we want to pass in the size of the buffer. Um, So we're going to pass in buff size here, and then we are going to look for everything that's now wrong um, because of that. Like this. Why is it not showing? Oh, one second. Yeah, that one's fine. Okay, so. Yeah, now I've got buff size in the um, in the mini buffer. Let's have a look. Okay, so I want to pass in C array byte size. Am I not able to do that? So let's do this. Keppel dot types. I'm pretty sure it's in there. Um, C array. Come on, what are you? Total size C array. Okay. Point of dimensions total size. Total size will be basically the product of the dimensions, if I remember correctly. Um, 
All right. Fair enough. Let's. Um, oh no. El no, there's element byte size. Okay. Let's just do this then. Um, C array element size. Element byte size times um, C array total size. And we'll be passing in the C array we've got here, and then hopefully this is the one we want. Which other ones are complaining? Oh, we've got a few pack pixels around here. <sighs> okay, so. Um, Let's go and do that there as well, because it seems that we're using a C array here, DST, DST. How big is this? I do not know. Um, oof, okay. Let's see if this has a total size in bytes. Um, byte size, okay. Yeah. GPU array BB byte size. This is quite a roundabout way of showing something I already know, but it's all right. Byte size dest. Okay. Oops. Where'd that go? God damn it. Byte size of dest. Okay. Hopefully that's all the errors gone now. Let's try um, this. So we have our thing, and if we do pull G of temp zero, we should get an operation error. This is from get n text image, and I've been through the test, the uh, steps to prove that that was due to the size. And the reason is really fucking stupid, and it's something, it's a combination of A, GL's API is bad, but also, how the hell didn't I notice this? You'll notice from GL get text image that you can specify the target, the format, the type, the destination, and the mipmap level, but you can't specify array layer, you can't specify cube face. So there's no way that it's pulling down just one if you're not telling it what it is. What it actually does is return everything at that mitmap layer at the mitmap level which is fucking ridiculous so we get when we're when we're trying to pull just one image from an array texture we're actually getting the whole array at that mitmap level which is very frustrating so what to do um we're not going to be able to do something good and um, the reason the reason for that is we come down here and we can see that all of, like this is the only one that's supported in all the versions that we want to support, which is like 3.3 .3 and up. Um, well, we support GL Core in Capital. So we want something that works for all of those. Um, we can use get texture image um, for 4.5. I think there is a way of doing it. Actually, that one it, in itself isn't going to be enough. So I'm not sure what the... There, there is some function, I believe, that allows you to pull just one image, but I'm not sure which one it is. Um, but this is a pain. So what we're gonna have to do is either take the texture and um, copy the data into another GPU object, like a like a buffer, essentially. We're gonna copy the contents the of the entire array to the buffer, and then we'll download only the bit we need. Or we download the whole thing and then do the copy on the CPU side. And I'm kind of inclined to do the latter. Um, and the reason is I really don't want to be creating extra GL objects in the middle of the frame. And, well, that's the thing. This is not going to perform well regardless. This is not going to be something like, oh, yeah, you want this in one of your core loops. So we're going to have to kind of say fuck it and do something that's predictable. And I don't want to have to create a GL object just to do the copy and then the download and then get rid of that object. So what I'm thinking of doing as well is just pull the whole thing down and then copy the chunk out, which sucks. Um, but that is what we're going to need to do. So let's have a look at what is going. So I'm sure there's some comments about this. Um, yes, Barrett, uh, as Shimera is saying, the 
specific GL void and all those kind of types is just so they're standardized across all the different platforms and things like this. Um, yeah, get get n text image is new in 4.5. It, it's crazy. Like, it, it should have been there from the beginning and I mean, it's also my dumb fault for not for just not reading probably. Like, I should have known because I, I, I know what will have happened is I would have been implementing all this stuff, like a bunch of features in one go, all the kind of download ones, and I remember that being hell. Um, so I think I was just plowing through it and not seeing the obvious thing, which is like, hey, you aren't providing enough parameters to do the thing you think you're doing. So, um, yeah, that's fine. Um... Okay, so let's just have the thing in the background going again because it's nice. There it is. Mm. All right. Um, and we are just going to have to suck up the fact that we're going to be doing more allocations than we want, and that is bums. All right, so. Let's just look at this. We've made some modifications to use get ntex image, which we don't want because that's only on 4.5. So let's get rid of that. Uh, so we compile all this code. We compile again because there's a style warning because some signatures have just changed. Um, uh, no, Barrett, the, uh, the reason I'm blaming myself is the one function that I was using originally was this one. And when you look at the signature for it, you can see that it only has, other than for the like destination and the type uh, of the data you're reading it, that you're packing and unpacking, it only has an argument here for specifying the mipmap level. But to identify an image, which I thought was what I was downloading, um, for certain kinds of textures, you also need a cube face and you need an array layer. They're never mentioned, so I should have known something was up. Um, but I didn't. So that that's the issue. Um, so we need, well, we need to go and look for pack pixels from texture. And we're going to have two paths, basically. We're going to have to look at... Um, we're going to have to look at... Just this path, which is great. If it's 2D, then hooray, everything's fine. Um, if it's, well, if it's 2D or 3D, I think we're fine. If it's an array texture or if it's a cube map texture or if it's an array, it's array cube map texture or cube map array texture, however they say it, then we're going to have to take care of all those things. So we will have, let's just have another one of these. Um... Pack layers from uh, layered texture. And how are we going to do this? Okay, so um, I assume that a lot of this is going to be the same, and it's only going to matter when we get in here. In that case, we'll merge this function back in. But for now, it's good to have a bit of space to work. So we bind the texture and then we want to, ah, okay, wait a second. So yes, this is where we're meant to write it. This is the row alignment. So what we actually need to do is take whatever the size is. We kind of do want to know what the size of the thing we're pulling down is because we're gonna need to multiply that by the number of layers inside, the, um, inside this. So, so layer count is going to be, um, let's have a look, GPU array um, T, and we have, so we're going to need the texture at this point because we're gonna have to get some details from there. So let's do let's star um, text is that. Uh, 
Um, and then we're going to go, so it's going to be texture. Right, and then we're going to have cubes. So if it's a cube map texture, then we've got six, otherwise it's one. So it's whatever the res how, how many elements are in the array, we can times it by six if it's if it's it's got six faces if it's cube map. Efficient speaking me, yes. Right. Um, texture. Um, how do we know if it's an array texture? Well, you spell texture for, for a start. Layers. Layer count. There we go. And that's actually it. Let's have a look. So hopefully for a normal texture, for like a, just a regular 2D texture, um, the layout count will be 1. So let's do make texture um, 10 by 10 and then the element type is it just doesn't matter. Um, 10 is not a single float. Fuck you! Um, oh, that's initial contents that way. Dimensions. Make texture nil. There we go. And texture layer count is the function I wanted to test. And it has one layer. Excellent. Good. That's what we want. So that is how much bigger this thing is going to be than we're expecting. Um, then we need the size of... Um... God damn it. I shouldn't have thrown away that stuff that we just did because it's exactly what we want, which is the size of the data. So um... let's have a look. Barrett saying, I suspect Metal will look familiar coming from GL. No. No, GL is, sorry, Metal is much better than API design-wise than GL. And arguably, it seems from people that have been working with it that Metal, the benefit Metal definitely has is, I mean, it's slightly higher level for a start, but also it was, it wasn't designed by such a large committee. Um, so there's some more consistencies to it, it seems like. I am not an authority on this tool. I've never used Metal, but I've watched people, people's conversations from the industry where they've been dealing with both uh, Metal and Vulcan. And um, there's definitely more interesting things in Vulcan as well as being a bit lower le more lower level, it seems. Um, yes, it's interesting. Um, so we'll have a single image bite size and this is this is one of the questions are we going to have to worry can we just multiply this size by um, by the layer count or are we going to have to take into account row alignment as well and I'm thinking the answer is we have to take into account row alignment as well so maybe we hmm just trying to think about this let's see let's see what we can do but we'll we'll prototype with this and then off stream I'll clean things up I just want to get started with something so Okay, so let's get texture from text array. Um, then we'll get the layer counts. Let's push this around here. Um, so temp size is go just going to be um, single image uh, byte size times the layer count. And then we are going to need a buffer. Um, we're going to need something to shove this in. So let's have a look at CFFI and it has with something, hopefully. Uh, with foreign object would be what we want. And it's going to be uh, the temp pointer. It's going to be of type uint8. It's going to be the count is going to be temp size. Um, you have to say count, I think. Oh no, optional is count, temp size. Um, and now we've got a block of this size. Then we'll do get text image. 
using this pointer. And that's going to pull, that's going to unpack that properly into this thing, which is great. And then we're going to have to copy the bit we want using mem copy. I think I might have put it like this. Okay, maybe not like this. How did you write it, you fucking idiot? Okay, maybe it's not that. Um, all right, let's go look for mem copy. <laughs> But we are going to need to copy to this from some um, CFI ink pointer. Um, come on, Chris. Ink pointer. Temp pointer. Some stuff. Okay. Grip. Mem copy. So close. It was a combination of all the bad decisions. Right, there we go. Okay, so we need the offset, which is going to be. Um, well, we need to work out which layer we're pulling from. Let's have a look what's going on here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Madness. Um, okay, where are we? Twenty-two, twenty-two. Nice. Okay, so we just need the offset to what should be the start of this. So it'll be um, GPU array T. Um, layer num of text times um, the base num wait a second What is the face num for a normal texture actually? Okay, um, so let's just ignore that for a second and try again. But actually indexing into Keppel's internals, textures. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, we need a GPU array from that texture. Fine. Um, let's get the default texture, sorry, default image from that. Okay, so cube face num is zero. So what is this gonna be? Um, We actually need the face count it's gonna be this and um, it's we can get the layer count easily let's just put this out there anyway layer count oh wait no yeah that should be layer count this should be face layer count or layer face count, that's the way to say it, isn't it? Layer face count. Okay. And now it depends on the order. I think it's array index and then face index. So it should be face num times, oh, what is it? <laughs> Um, I 
this is why I shouldn't do these things on stream because this I get stressed because I know this is incredibly simple math and my brain's just not obeying um, okay so right so we've got let's work out which face the index into the face we're interested in so the um, single image byte size times uh, the face number is going to be the offset into um, a cube map, for example. Um, and then we want the. Wait a second, where are we here? There we go. It's um, interesting. Okay, there we go. And now we need the. We need the size of all of the faces. So it would be the face count times single image byte size and then multiplied by which layer we're at. I think. I'm not confident about that at all. Anyway, I'm hoping that's uh, something. Well, it doesn't like that at all. Um, well, yes, it's not going to be the texture that we're interested in here. It's going to be the text array, because that's what we're looking up into. Um, and then we're going to get the offset, and we are going to come down here. Um, we're going to increment the pointer by the offset. That's where the image is going to start. Um, destination pointer is this one, then we've got the source pointer, mm, yes, and then we've got the byte length, which is single image byte size, maybe, maybe something like that. Um, and the fact that didn't just complain when I compiled the whole file means that it is full of shit, because we just added... Didn't we add this? What's going on? We've got this single image byte size argument here now. Everyone should be complaining about that. Yet no one does. Oh yeah, because no one's using this function yet. Okay. Um, also, the fact we don't have types for these is weird. Why, didn't we, why haven't I typed that yet? Uh, well, I'll have to deal with that as well. Um, I mean, this should be the more general one, right? So we should be able to replace this with this temporarily and get the same result. We'll just be doing an unnecessary copy in most cases. So let's see if we can do this. So it's on pack pixels from texture. Yes. Um, and now everything should complain again. Hooray. Okay, so we're back to this. Um, so we make a, a C array, we make it with those dimensions, then we want the... So we're hoping, if I'm not completely wrong, so I actually need this to be... Yeah, I'm just not confident about that. It can't just be the element size times the total size because we have to take alignment into account. Row alignment in GL is important. So we actually want, I remember there being a C array row size. Row byte size, yeah, uh, of the C array. And now it'd be really good to have a row count as well. Um, I'm not sure how exactly that is stored in here. Might not be. Make C array uh, initial contents is nil. Um, the dimensions are two, three, and four. Um, and the element type 
is a bite. That's probably not okay. Yeah. You in date. I don't know why I did that. Let's have a look. Okay, so. So that's it's not quite what we want. So, uh, so we've got the products here. That's not really what I'm after. Total size is 24, but we've got a row alignment involved. I mean, this can be one, two, four, or eight. Um, so we actually want to just know it's going to be um, three times four, right? So we have the rest of the dimensions, we know what the thing is. Um, yeah, we've got the products of the sizes. I know I used this somewhere else, uh, but it's not what I need here. How annoying. I could temporarily just throw the, the actual full byte size onto this object. Um, uh, it's a bit lazy, but I might do it um, just so we can get this experiment moving on a bit faster. Um, yeah, maybe we do that. Um, it is not going to like this because these types are structs and so we're not, not going to want to redefine that. But oh well. Um, where's total size? There we go. Let's add total byte size. Total byte size, and the type is, yeah, we'll do a C array index again. Um, total byte size, continue, recklessly continue even. Um, now I'm gonna look for everywhere that's using make C array. Isn't too many places. Let's look for where that point is being made. That's being passed in, so that's not of interest to us here. Um, nope. Ah, oh, here we go. There's the byte size there. Total byte size is this. Total by size and ah, that's uh, this isn't going to work, and I remember why. Um, at least I think I do. Second, why is that complaining? Oh yeah, it's meant to be a let's start, that's why. We go back to make C array from pointer. It's a bit shitty that we are not able to... Um... Sorry, let's just have a look here. Actually, we should just be able to do the same thing, right? We'll just calculate what the size is. Um... Where's that? Total byte size is this Oops. total byte size or total byte size no oh now the user makes c array um wait a second it's doing mem copy so it's where's it getting size from C array byte size. Oh, don't tell me there's a, there's already a fucking function for it. Of course there is. Of course there is. Why wouldn't there be a function for this, you fucking idiot? All right, okay. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's get rid of these edits to C arrays and kettle types, and let's just go back here and go and use the function which we already had for this. Um, 
God damn it. Okay. No. CRA. So I bet this is in Kepler.types. Where is it actually? We we're just looking at it, and now I don't know where the damn thing is. Oh, it's in Kepler.c arrays, fair enough. Back in textures, Kepler.c arrays. There we go, that's the bloody thing. Okay, pack pixels, we've got another C array. Um, DST. And then the other ones, no. We have GPU array, DB, byte size, GPU array DB. Same thing here. Oh no, it's called Dest. Wait a second, this is... Ooh, wait a second, pack pixels from texture. Surely we want... Okay, I think I've been fucking around with this as well. No, so my assumption has been that I can just take the size from the C array, from, from whatever the destination is, but that's not the case at all. Uh, we definitely need to get the correct image size here. So I'm gonna have to pay a bit more attention for doing the GPU, like, GPU array buffer stuff. Um, it's a new buffer back GPU array. This one's fine, this one's not. Um, same goes for this. You're passing in a C array, so we can't trust that that's the right size. Okay, so we'll, we'll need to fix those two, but we can work on those soon. Um, I just want to see if I can get somewhere on this. Let's see what breaks down. So temp zero, full G, Temp zero. Ooh, actually, before I do this, I should temporarily use get n, right? Because we want a readable error we can work with. Um, so this needs to be temp size. Right, let's do full G of that. <laughs> error during printing, excellent. Oh yeah, we just went and fucked up with the whole, um, we redefined C arrays, didn't we? And we haven't fixed that up. So we really need to go and reload Keppel. Uh, poor thing is busted. Um, it would really help Chris if you had actually saved those files before you tried to load it. Let's just do that again. And I will be back in chat very shortly. I've been rambling away for a long time. Um, oh, pumped my head off. Sorry for missing that, mate. Um, Indigo Silverbell. I did work on the cutaway stuff, or at least I demonstrated the technique that I came up well came up with. The, the, I landed on the other day, um, so that was a kind of little demonstration at the beginning, and now I'm just kind of tinkering away on some Keppel stuff. Um, Clubs is saying I'm so confused. Seeing Lisp code for the first time. How do you inter interoperate with C? Oh, cool. Welcome. Uh, by the way, and Clubsy. So we have a library called CFFI, which is the common Lisp FFI, um, and it allows us to talk to, it allows us to load DLLs, it allows us to um, allocate memory, it allows us to call C functions and things like that. Um, so you can do things like for an alloc, you can specify a type like float, and then we can say a count of 10. And this is a, now a pointer to a malloc chunk of memory that is has enough space to store 10 floats, right? 
And so now we can do things with this pointer. Uh, like it's just make a temporary variable def var temp one for that pointer. And then let's do CFFI memref, memaref. Okay, so this is reading a value out of that foreign memory. So temp one, type as float, and um, we'll look at index zero. And right now we can see that there is garbage there. Um, so we're going to set a value. So then we can say setf, and we're going to put the number 12 there. And now when we read from there again, we can see we get 12 back. And the other positions are still filled with garbage, but our first position has a value in it. So we can start with this, and then um, again with the function calls and all that other kind of stuff, we can build from there. There's all kinds of macros for defining um, C compatible structs and things like this, um, and they work with all these kind of things. So you can define, define a C struct, and then you can use that type here instead of float or int or whatever you're doing. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty complete actually. And as you can see, um, it's very easy to play around with, even from the REPL and stuff like this, which is quite nice. So a lot of the things, I'm I, unfortunately, this is uh, yeah, a, an awkward time to come into the stream uh, because, again, I'm just hacking away on a project right now. Um, so I'm not being, so I'm really, really glad you asked the questions. Um, because otherwise I'll just be rambling away to myself and doing all this other stuff. But yeah, we're doing a lot of foreign code. So I made this uh, library called Keppel, which is an interop library. It's a wrapper around OpenGL to make it feel lispy and to make it nice to play with from the REPL and stuff like this. Um, yeah, it's CFFI access adapter. Like you'll, you'll have seen FFIs probably in other languages as well. Uh, like Python has an FFI. Uh, most like most libraries have most languages. Sorry, have some way of interopping with C. Um, CFFI really so there's different implementations of the common list standard so like the one I use is called SPCL just happens to be a nice fast one but there are other ones and a lot of them have their own FFI features built in and so CFFI wraps around the top and adds loads of helpers and things like this so it's it's really nice um, and yes there's masses of that stuff in here and unfortunately I saw this shortcoming in um, OpenGL today where the the image, the texture download stuff I wanted to play with um, downloads too much of the texture or more than I needed. So I'm having to put it in a temporary buffer to copy out the bit I need and then destroy it. And that's what I'm doing with, with foreign objects. This is temporarily allocating. And so if the object is small enough, this is probably going to be allocated on the stack. Otherwise, it's going to be allocated on the heap, which is unfortunate in this case. But we're saying, hey, we want a byte, and we want this many bytes, and we want the pointer to be here, bound here. So this is a variable that will contain the pointer. And then we're doing some memcopy stuff with it. Um, yeah. So yes, I did, I did a kind of big ramble on CFFI in one of my videos. In fact, I'll, I'll find the link quickly. One second. I'll go get it. It was in a little bit of Lisp, so little bit of Lisp CFFI. It's a big episode, unfortunately. Well, I mean, I, I would like to have done something much tighter than this. Um, but <laughs> I just sat down one day and we did this episode. So I hope it's helpful. Um, but yes, if this is your first time seeing Lisp code, this will come as quite a... Ugh, um, culture shock type thing it's not it doesn't need to be nearly as horrible as i write it so um do not fear right reset fbo's and now i want to go back to make texture okay this was the texture that we were using before def var temp zero this so this is our array texture and then I wanted to pull it. Oh, that didn't complain that time. Okay. So, why did we set the the element type to be depth component? That must have been from another day. Let's make another array. Let's actually free it, which we very rarely do. But let's free that, and then we're gonna. Do this and set f temp zero. 
to be this. And let's make it float. And we'll have three layers. And they'll be two by two, just so we can. it's easy to manage from the REPL. So temp zero is that. Good. And then we can pull G. Oh, yeah, of course. Pulling the whole texture is fine. Oh, wait a second. What are we doing here? We're doing pull G on a texture and we're just getting two elements? That's wrong. Something's fucky. Right, let's have a look. So, what I actually wanted to do... Oh, no, now I'm confused. Now I'm going to have to go look at this. So, pull G of texture. Is this going to be another bug? Probably. Um, copy texture back GPU array to new Lisp data. So why, wait a second, why is it? That can't be right. All right, so the default behavior is if you just pass pull G a texture, it'll grab the first the first image from that texture and download it. I don't entirely like that behavior, um, but at least I can live with it. Um, yeah. Do we have textures still open? No. We'll get back to that. But this hasn't outright crashed, so let's see if we can mess around with this a bit. Um... So temp zero, text ref, and let's just add, like get the first. So layer one is a GPU array, which is that. So I would like to push some new data to this. We're gonna take this and we're gonna just pop it here and we're gonna change it up so it's all ones. One, 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 right? And then we're going to pull that layer again, and we can see it's zero. So we're obviously doing that wrong. But if we look at layer zero, we can see that it's there. So we have... Do we have issues with push? Do we have issues with pull? Who knows? All of it. All of the above, apparently. Um... Okay, so we could pull the full texture and do something with that then maybe. See where the data actually is. Um, looks like we've got some more bugs, which is excellent. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to track here one of the questions. So, Bag is saying to fix that, i.e. to make your own function to do just what you want, would you tweak something in the compiler? I'm not sure which function you're talking about, Barrett. So if you're talking about the one that pulls the stuff, we can't change the GL spec. So we just have to work with what we've got. Um, and so what we're going to do is just, we have a thing that pulls down too much, so we'll pull that down and then just copy out the part we need. Um, if there's a function I want for my, like if there's an addition I want to the shader language that we work with, so like um, let's have a look back and render again these GPU functions for example, that's going through my compiler so that's stuff that we can we can hack on and we definitely do that plenty um, but we're not having problems with shaders right now, it's just with, yeah, the API we've got to GL is missing some really obvious stuff and that's compounded with the fact that I, there are bugs in cap, and I need to I need to fix those up. Um, so the question is now, when I'm pushing to a GPU array T, which is a texture-backed GPU array, and when I push a C array at it, what is it doing? It's copying C array to texture-backed GPU array. Upload C array to GPU array T. Yes, there we go. And get to here.
And so when it gets in here, we've got this GPU array, right? Bam, 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 bam. check something there because I'm seeing this which just should be texture okay so we upload to texture we pass in texture type we pass in a level num and we pass in the layer num so this should have been given all the values we needed to get to do this right I wonder what it was Because our value is a, let's have a look at our texture. Temp zero is a texture 2D array, which is here. And that has to use text sub image 3D. Yes, where the, oh, these functions make me question my sanity okay why does it have to be 3d in this case we have to pass in the target and the level and then the offsets okay right level is mipmap level and then we have so we have the target and we have the mipmap level we have the x offset, the y offset, and the z offset, and the width, the height, and the depth, yes, is the layer number. Is that right? God damn. And then the format, and the type, and the pixels. It's interesting. So. Hmm. Now I'm going to have to go and have a look at this as well. What time are we at, actually? We're nearly at the end. Yes, I have a feeling we, we will not be sussing this out today. But this is something I can look at in my own time as well. Um, so what I really want to do, if I'm taking tomorrow off, what I, I think I'll look at is um, is nuclear, um, lib nuclear. Which, so, so Borodust has wrapped up the nuclear UI library, which is fantastic. It's a tiny C library for immediate UI. It's uh, really cool. And originally it had some kind of C code packaged with it, which was the basic the basic kind of fallback renderer. Just like if you, if you didn't bring your own stuff, if you didn't bring your own renderer, it would use that. And I want to rewrite that using CLOpenGL. Um, and then we're gonna port that. So, so that's something that then anyone can use. And then I'm also going to then put, use that to um, add integration to Keppel. So then we can have some UI stuff. Because we're in desperate need of some UI elements in our general experiments. So um, that will be really fun. But I just need to, yeah. I need, I need to sit down and do that work. And it's been weeks since I've, I know it's been months since I said I was going to do it. And I started. And then, yeah, I just wasn't able to continue. So that is rather a bum. So we w I will get to that. Um, But yeah, let's have a look at this. So, specifies the texel offset in the Z direction within the texture array. So we're uploading, okay. Specifies the target to which the texture is bound for, for this. It must be a 3D texture or what we're using, a 2D um, array texture. And in that case, See, this to me, specify the depth of the texture as some image. That almost sounds like the, yeah, this, if this is the size, this is the, we're uploading, we're uploading a slice, right? If we were pushing to, if we were pushing the entire array in one go, I would have thought we were using this. Sorry, we thought we would we would um, have a look here. Hmm. 
I'm thinking this might be this and this might be this. That looks a bit more promising. But also somewhat distressing. Let's set this to layer 0. And pull layer 1, and then pull layer 0. Yeah, that's starting to behave a bit more as expected. Ooh, some nasty bugs. Okay, but we're getting somewhere at least. Pull G is starting to behave. Push G has some issues that we need to fix up. Um, I don't think we're going to get anything more um, sensible done on the stream, so I'm going to wrap up now. Um, what I'll do offline is now we've identified where things need to be, I'll go and clean it up and actually make things <laughs> make things somehow valid. Um, because we've We've done horrible hacks all over the place there. But that's not going to be too hard. It just needs some time and a clear head. Um, which I'll have both of those soon. Um, and then, yeah, maybe hopefully tomorrow I get to do some UI stuff. We'll see. Right. Uh, no, I'm not going to head off to IRC now. I'm going to go and uh, I'll probably have a gin and tonic actually and just try and decompress a little. So thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I hope this was somewhat entertaining. And if not... My apologies. I'll catch you next time. Ciao.